the cycleways were really good to boost the levels. So we now have so many people cycling that those cycle paths are no longer good enough at some locations, at very specific locations. So um, yeah, that is uh, making my life a bit harder now to explain that. But uh, yeah, so this street used to have separate cycling infrastructure. Right. And now the whole street is a, like a cycleway and cars right. are allowed to use it as well. Yeah. But you couldn't just skip that step. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Simmerman, and that was Mark Wackenbeer, also known as Bicycle Dutch. Mark and I discussed the history behind how he became a worldwide ambassador of Dutch cycling infrastructure, how the Netherlands actually got their bicycle paths, and how cities around the globe can adapt the lessons learned by the Dutch to their own circumstances. But before we dive into all that, please allow me a very brief moment to say thank you so very much for tuning in. I really appreciate that you're here, and it's always so wonderful to have you along for the ride. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Mark. I'm absolutely delighted to, to have you here, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. Why yeah. don't you do this? Why, why don't you just take uh, about 30 seconds to give a real quick overview to, to who you are? I was dreading this question. <laughs> yeah, it's only 30 seconds, so pitch, I, 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 oh I'm well. letting you off easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, well, my name is Mark Wagenbuur. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> um, I've been making videos and uh, about cycling in the Netherlands because I would love for the rest of the world to have what we have and to be able to experience what I can experience on a daily basis mm -hmm. since childhood, really. And uh, it's improving in the Netherlands uh, every day almost. And I love to show what we're doing in this country yeah. to make it even better than it already was. Fantastic. So part of it is pride, yeah. proud, pr proudness of my country. Yeah. And part of it is wanting to share what we have. And I would love for other people to be able to experience that as well. Yeah, fantastic. And we're so grateful that you are doing that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, and, and I don't know if you know this or not, but you and I are the same age. So... Are we? Okay. Yeah, so no, we're, we're 1965 no. babies. And so this is mm -hmm. you uh, in, in 66. And so you, right. you were... You weren't kidding, you know, from a very, very early age. <laughs> and, and I have memories of this, yes. Do you? Wow. Yeah. Oh, yes. I can remember sitting there with my father. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. my first own bicycle. Yeah, yeah. A tricycle, of course. Yeah. Second birthday. Long shall he live is on the board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that yeah. was the yeah the tradition in the morning. Right. Still in night outfit, <laughs> you yeah, would get yeah. the bicycle. Yeah. And, and look how cool I am yes. on my own bicycle. The attitude. I love it. That's yes. fantastic. Still in diapers. <laughs> fantastic. And, yeah. and, and, then, and getting out and, and hitting uh, hitting the, the public, getting out on the it, roads. That was, that was the, yeah. the where I grew up. And yep. those houses, they were in a square, two rows of houses at the back of each other. Yeah. And I could circle around it on the sidewalk and right. without any crossings or whatever. So my mother always told me, don't leave the sidewalk here. Right. And yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, after a while, I wanted to go away. And then she said, okay, you can go a bit further, but don't go. Yeah. F uh, don't leave the cycle paths. Yeah. So and you're, and you're about ways. five years old in this, this photo. Here I am five years old. Yeah. So this yeah. could be another. Actually, I'm in the, on the same bicycle as one of the first because that was a hand-me-down from my uncle. Ah, fabulous. Uh, the second picture you showed. I yeah, was yeah. in the back of that same bicycle. And this is my own bicycle yep. when I was seven years old. It is yep. way too high, as you can see. Yeah. We're still in pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in pajamas, my yes. sister, my father. And that uh, horizontal bar was uh, detachable, which was good ah. because you can see that it is way too big for me, that bicycle. So Fabulous. I could do this. I used it until I was about 10, I think. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, good, so, good yeah. stuff. And then because uh, that's are. the next picture. Here yeah, I am yeah. on my tenth birthday, 1975. Yeah, and that is the way out. <laughs> yes. So we're now looking, and that is that is exactly how I went in the distance. Yeah. And then, then I found the the, uh, the cycle paths around the circular ring road of mm -hmm. Utrecht, and that was my way out because 
I could encircle all of Utrecht without ever leaving the cycle paths. Right. So I did what my mother told me to do, but I was at the other end of the city. <laughs> Once great. I found that out, that was great. Yeah. And, then, and now this ah, is yeah. significantly further along. So yes, what's, what's going on here? This is with you in, in Berlin, right? Yeah, and you can see that I'm in the Utrecht Utrecht Street, the Utrechter Straße ah. in German. So I was still very chauvinistic because <laughs> I grew up in Utrecht, for uh -huh. those of you who don't know that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took a picture in the Utrecht Street in oh. Berlin while I was on vacation here. I yeah, also yeah. lived in Berlin for one summer. I think it was the same same year, 1992, I lived in Berlin right. for the summer. Ah, so yeah. that gave yeah. me an, uh, a unique perspective, I believe. Yeah. This is the summer of 92 when I lived there. Right. This is in the center of Berlin. Mm -hmm. The KDW is in the background, the Kaufhaus des Westens, where they had all the Western stuff in West Berlin. Yeah. And you can see the old cars. It yeah. is 30 years ago. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's how I yeah. lived in Berlin. So yeah. yeah. yeah it was very eye-opening to me to be a foreigner once. Yeah. So, and, and then also, this is you back in 92. So, uh, is that yeah, still so there? Yeah. So, another birthday. Another yep. birthday. No, this is in the back garden of okay. my, my parents. So, where I always wa also was as a five year old. Yeah. So, we kept the tradition another bicycle on my birthday. Oh, really? This was my first black Aww. bicycle. And I only had it for three months and then it was stolen. <laughs> so, um, but I was 27 here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So wow. we kept the tradition going for a you long time. You kept the tradition going. That's yeah, great. Yeah. That's great. It may now, have been my last bicycle. So one of the yeah. things that, that I know about you that, that you did is you kept like a scrapbook. So yes. Uh, yeah, well, yes. What was that so all about? Are, this is from 73. You know, yeah. Yeah, that is a, a, an yeah. article. And this is from 78. Okay. So in 73, they closed off the street I lived on mm -hmm. and I was... 73, so I was seven, eight years old. Right. And I kept the clipping because I was on the picture. Oh, I was on the picture. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's a circle somewhere yeah. and I was on the picture. But I always also was interested in why they closed the street. I was right. against it at the time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in 78, there was a royal uh, decision that the street had to be open again. Mm -hmm. A lot of people had uh, yeah, protested against mm. this closure right. and it was had to be opened again. And I, I wrote about how they reopened it and redesigned it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a letter from the uh, council to the residents right. saying that they need to do this because it was a royal decree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. Interesting. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and this is uh, still from 78. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I described what they were doing, why they right. were doing it and uh, what I thought about it. Mm -hmm. And in a way, this is like the ancestor of my blog. Because yeah, yeah, that is yeah. exactly what I still do. I document change. Right. And I document why, how, when, yeah. who. <laughs> so that is uh, only I didn't have an audience at that time. Right. right. And now I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so did. yeah, this is what I did. I, I, I used, I, I, I cut out all the articles that I found interesting about mm -hmm. road design, about city design. And this is very interesting because you see these cars at the right hand side. Uh -huh. That is that uh, road in the place of the canal in Utrecht. We'll see and some photos from, of that in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. From yeah. 1986, they were already talking about removing that highway uh, and yes. bringing the water back. Yeah. So 1986, and it took until 2015. So wow, <laughs> before this part was opened, yeah, and yeah. I, I followed that all my life. So I never had an education in in any urban design or urban planning. Right. But I educated myself through articles like these and right. keeping scrapbooks, and they yeah. even help me to this day because I kept scraps of articles that help me write my blog posts sometimes right. even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fascinating. Um, when you think back to your childhood and when you first started doing these uh, scrapbooks and, and taking these notes, and what, what do you point back to in terms of that fascination? Was it that event of having the street closed in front of your place or was it something else? I don't know. I'm just interested. In, uh, other boys are interested in cars. I was interested in how where the cars were <laughs> more than the cars itself. So yeah, it is a, a fascination for transport. Um, I think it mainly started when my mother told me not to cross this and that street, not to go there because that's dangerous. And I was like, why is that dangerous? And 
that it fascinated me already. And also, I, I, as a young child, I saw a book in the library once that had pictures of a, a changing city. And you saw a house and a family outside the city and you slowly saw the expansion of the city coming closer. And then there was a whole strip of pictures and they had pictures every time the houses came closer, there was a new road and at the end, the house was demolished and the mother was crying. And that book made such an impression on me that that is still the core of my, of my uh, blog, uh, documenting change. So yeah, yeah. I think that was a fascination there. And speaking of the core of your blog, so this is the slide <laughs> that you sent over to me. This is the data that you currently have. So this is literally fast yeah, forward. So early twenty twenty two. Yeah. It's like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're looking well, actually, at the, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I the, was figures, gonna... the figures the figures were from yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I saw 54, uh, 200. It was two hundred. And I yeah, thought, yeah. oh, let's round it up because this will be uh Yeah, yeah. Uh, broadcast yeah. a, a bit later it's going to be broadcast uh, quite a I bit later I looked again this yeah. morning and I was already past it <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so yeah. for those of you who are tuning in uh, this is going to be released on uh, February 25th or right about that uh, that week uh, you know Mark yeah. and I will do a premiere which hopefully you're viewing that premiere right now uh, live with us uh, so but yeah we're recording this uh, at the end of 2021 so this is the data from the end of 2021 and a few things exactly. really stand out for me is that you've been doing this for over a decade, you know, 13 years yes. out on YouTube, 11 years on your blog, just amazing viewership. And, you know, you look at just in 2021, uh, 4.15 million views of your videos. Yes. It, it's extraordinary. And it, it, it kind of all <laughs> dates back to some of these early, you know, shifts of you just being fascinated by it and, you know, keeping scrapbooks to starting to write about it and then starting to um, be a little bit of the face of an ambassador of Dutch cycling. And, yeah. uh, and, and this, I think, is uh, of you back in 2011. So, again, in the early right. days. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I started in 2009. I made mm -hmm. a video about this very crossing that mm -hmm. people can see here, where I'm standing. Um, this is a photo from the uh, magazine for the Cyclist Union members. Mm -hmm. um, they had also noticed that at, ta at that time, it was already viewed for one million times. Uh, yeah. um, in 2009, I was already on the internet for quite some time. To, right. I was one of the early adapters, 1996. So, and somebody said something wrong on the internet. Mm -hmm. So uh, at that time you were still, um, you still had the idea that you could correct someone on the internet. <laughs> so I, I tried, uh, I, I, I found a vehicular cyclist. I didn't know that term at the time, but somebody said that cycling uh, on cycle ways or cycle paths, mm -hmm. I, I, I try to avoid the word cycle path because everybody hears Cycle path. Oh, right. But, uh, yes. Bicycle path. Yes. So the bicycle paths are a bad idea for cycling because, um, yeah. as you know, a cy uh, somebody cycling is a, a vehicle, so he should be on the road, right? Yeah. So I thought, that's ridiculous. I will show you a video about our cycle paths and you will instantly see yeah. that it is not the case. Yeah, yeah. But there weren't any. There weren't and I, I'm, I'm yeah. grinning ear to ear because, yeah. I, you know, YouTube back in 2009, started. yeah, I mean, yeah. back in 2009, I, you know, I was, uh, 2008, 2007, you know, I, I was, I was a vehicular cyclist, you know, I taught ah, classes okay. so, about. But it wasn't you, know, you right? <laughs> it wasn't me, no. <laughs> no, no uh, it, but anyway, well, yeah, because tried, we were still, find videos. yeah, even though we, yeah. we, we were doing that, it was really, it was what I try to mechanism. point back to is the fact that mm -hmm. that was like the golden era of the transition starting to understand just how mm -hmm. powerful having protected and separated infrastructure was. And, yes. uh, yeah, so fantastic stuff. Now this is, you know, really starting off, kicking off the beginning of what would end up being like a worldwide tour for you. Uh, yes. I, I don't speak Dutch, so you're going to have to help me out. What is this saying? Because you're carrying, I think, a trophy here. 
I am carrying a saddle, okay. uh, a steel saddle. It was five kilograms, so that's mm -hmm. uh, 11 pounds in your, your money. Yeah. Um, and it says over the photo, it says the headline, Bossonar, so someone from Den Bosch, mm -hmm. happy with Spanish prize. So ah. I got a Spanish award. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah. And what was the they award for? Me. Uh, because they used my videos uh -huh. to uh, in, in study study circles. Uh, mm -hmm. They are, were from Pamplona, where uh -huh. they run okay. with the bulls. Yes, and I yes. thought, oh, I will come and collect my award. But no, no, <laughs> they came with a with a, four people came to to deliver that prize here, and they wanted to see the Netherlands uh, uh, more than they wanted to invite me to Pamplona. Right, right, right. Well, so that, well, well, that was okay. And it rained nonstop when they were here. And, yeah. But well, you, you, it, Spain, it, wasn't, so it were, wasn't long, and then you start traveling. So here you are in course, what, Chicago, yes. right? Here I'm testing the Divi bikes. Uh -huh. This was before they were on the streets. I think okay. they were presented here on some uh, bike fest. Okay. And I was invited there by Stephen Vance from Street uh, Films also, I believe. Mm -hmm. Street Blogs, at least. Street Blog, okay. And, yeah. yeah. And he, uh, in, uh, yeah, so here I am testing the DV. I can't remember whether I cycled. I don't believe I ever cycled in the US. This may be the exception on this oh, field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that I yeah. just went back and forth. But I've never been on the streets. In, and here, oh, here, yeah. here you are getting busted. What, what happened here? Here I am getting busted in Brisbane. In <laughs> Brisbane, where it is uh, mandatory to wear a helmet. Unless you have... A letter from a doctor telling the uh, officer that, that stops you that you have a medical condition uh -huh. that uh -huh. prevents you wearing a helmet and I had such a letter which is good. Uh, good. Yeah. completely legal yeah. but they they really they cut me off I almost fell and they were very unfriendly yeah. and um, yeah, where's well. your helmet <laughs> I say I don't have a helmet but I have a letter of exemption yes show me <laughs> and then I got the, he, he got the letter and it was perfectly legal. Yeah. He was not allowed to ask what the medical condition is. Yeah. I wouldn't have known. Yeah. But um, the doctor who wrote that letter is also busted in the same picture. Oh, good. <laughs> so Excellent. Yeah. I was very so happy he had they a letter didn't too. reference <laughs> because uh, his name would be the doctor. But they did check whether it was a real doctor and whether the document was real. Yeah. They um, copied my entire passport and yeah. kept... Being unfriendly yeah. for the entire time. They never ex uh, apologized, even yeah. though I almost fell. Yeah, yeah. And we're in, we're in a park. We're not even on the, on the public You're not road. even on the streets. Yeah. And then when we, we kept on cycling and other cyclists, they, they shook their heads when, we, then when they saw us. Yeah. And for me, having cycled all my life without, without yeah. any plastic on my head, yeah. that's no, the stupidity yeah. was... It was Incredible. amazing. Yeah. And what it's we like, know, and, and we do talk about this on the uh, the, the podcast uh, frequently, um, I, I am a helmet wearer of uh, conditions. Uh, it's context oh, sensitive. Okay, yeah. You know, when I'm on my racing bike, I wear my helmet. When I'm on my mountain bike and I'm blasting through single track and trees, I'm wearing my helmet. When I get on my bike and ride to the grocery store, I am fortunate enough to have safe routes um, to be yeah. able to get to the grocery store. And so I feel completely comfortable doing so. And as a public mm -hmm. health professional, I know that the, the, pr the presentation of making cycling seem like a dangerous activity when you're doing just normal everyday upright bicycling, you know, to the grocery store, making that mm -hmm. seem like a dangerous activity is actually counterproductive because it sends it the wrong message to yeah. the rest of society. Yeah. And that's exactly what has played out in every single municipality that has passed helmet laws, such as Australia, yeah. is they see the suppression of the number of people actually riding. And when you look at the actuarial case of, you know, the disease that could have been prevented by getting more people to ride a bike, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is it's a public health story of it's exactly. better to create safer systems and safer cycling than to try to manage or mandate wearing safety equipment. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
Just worry about the mopeds. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the noise of the city. We love it. It's I the am soundtrack the of, of the city. It's yes, the soundtrack of the city. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Having grown up in a society where helmets are a definite no-no, because um, we already, we all feel yeah. that cycling is not dangerous because right. we have done it all our lives. I've yeah. been in an accident. Uh, I've been in a crash once when I was 12 cycling home from from uh, school I was hit by a car from the back mm -hmm. and I fell yeah well I landed on my behind so I couldn't sit for six weeks but my head yeah. never touched the ground yeah, yeah. because that's not what happens so yeah. um, no. and, and to be clear I when I visit the Netherlands and I've, I've had the the privilege of being there a few times I have seen people wearing helmets, but typically it's the the, the road racers, the the folks, and it's typically yeah. when I'm outside of town, and they are uh, you know on their racing bikes, and you yeah. know they're they're traveling, you know, gosh, in, in excess of you know probably fifty kilometers per hour, and yeah. and and really moving. So it's a different context. Right. Well, let's continue yeah, totally. this. Uh, let's continue this because yeah, totally. you continued. This is still in Australia here. Yeah. And a and different is, time in Australia. Oh, no, okay. that's the different same uh, trip. Okay. trip. Yeah. 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 No, I've been to Australia four or five times. So here I'm and, at work in, in wintertime. And so this is work in the wintertime. Now we're back in the Netherlands here, so, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm just standing at the corner of the yeah. street and I'm filming cars passing. So a lot Fantastic. of people <laughs> look at me. Yeah. Like, what are you what doing? Are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You're sitting here filming. Doing? Here he is again. I'm, I'm, filming yeah, signs. Yeah, I'm in the middle of nowhere filming a sign. <laughs> There's nothing in this picture but a sign. Yeah, this is my name in, in Cyrillic letters. Yeah, so I'm going to actually... Here I am on the Russian I'm going to zoom this out so we can see this a yeah. little bit better. and We'll see yeah. some of the, the lettering. Yeah. So, and I was told that I uh, well, they cut it really nicely mm -hmm. because the alderman for traffic from Saint Petersburg told right. the audience that the street in Saint, streets in Saint Petersburg are too narrow for cycling infrastructure. Uh -huh. And then I come and uh, they ask me what I thought about uh, Saint Petersburg, and, I, and the first thing I say: the streets are incredibly wide. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, because yeah, there were eight lanes of traffic. So. Yeah. And this is you back in Brisbane again. So. Back in Brisbane, and this yeah. time I was yeah. invited by the by the by the authorities, ah. and the trip was paid yeah. for by the authorities. So here you see a helmet dangling from my sure, sure, my sure. handlebars. Sure. Sure. This was yeah. the only time ever in my life that I wore a helmet. Yeah. So yeah. I had to yeah. comply to the law in this time. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, I never I, even touched a helmet before. Oh, they were really? so light and flimsy. Yeah, now yeah. I am absolutely certain that they do yeah. nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And here you are yet yeah, again. This is Canberra. Yeah. Yeah. Canberra, the capital of uh, of uh, of Australia. This was very funny because I was invited in Perth, but mm -hmm. I have relatives in Brisbane. So I said, ah, "Oh, okay." Well, then I will go afterwards. I will go to my relatives, and then they said, "Oh, but Brisbane might also want a talk from you, so yeah. we may be able to combine it." And then when I was in Brisbane, you're only a thousand kilometers from the capital, um, Canberra, and this is me in the garden of the Dutch embassy yeah. with the real ambassador for the Netherlands. Yes. So, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, so it became so one you're week. the you're the you're the cycling ambassador meeting the, yeah, the real yeah. ambassador. <laughs> so I was a bit embarrassed to tell her that, but she she only laughed and said, "That's okay." I said, "You're the real ambassador. You studied for it." Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. an honorable honorable that's, title for me. That's good. Yeah, story. and the right hand side is uh, another mark. So okay. I'm in the middle, the shortest one, which is defying all prejudice, right. prejudice about the tall Dutch. No, yeah. here the Australians are much taller than me. Yeah. And on the right hand side is the Australian Minister for Transport, Mark yeah. Bailey. And they had, <laughs> they had organized a talk with him um, in the morning, a coffee talk. And I thought, ooh, I've never talked at that level. Yeah, yeah. What can I tell him? So I had prepared a, um, a short presentation and my computer wouldn't start because it was not plugged in and it took a bit more time. And then he said, I've had it with people glorifying Dutch cycling. I thought, 
okay, let's shut the computer, put it away. <laughs> and then I told him, yes, yeah, so what do you want to hear from me? And then he had some uh, concrete questions and I asked, uh, answered those questions, gave him some ideas. And there were people in the second row, they were, mm, yes, yeah. <laughs> because he was really listening and... Uh, we had a real good conversation good, because good. I simply said, so what do you want? Yeah. This and I was, think that's important is, is we yeah. can't, I mean, obviously the Active Towns Initiative is all about trying to tell the positive stories that are out there from what yeah. we know uh, that cities and communities are doing to, to create a, a, a positive environment, a healthy environment, which include, in, encourages healthy activity. And there's so many great positive stories out there. And, and you're one of the storytellers that, that are doing that. But oftentimes, you know, people just, they're, they're not yet r- willing to hear it. And so it's really mm-hmm. important to, yeah. to do what you did, which is just take a step back and, you know, ask how, how you can help and wh- yeah. what questions do they have? Um, one of the, the, the common things that comes up is, is, is weather. And, you know, the, hmm. the, the, the classic thing is, is, oh, no, we, we, can't, we can't cycle. You don't understand. The Dutch, you know, it's just a flat place and it's, it's always pretty decent weather. Yeah, sometimes they get some, some, uh, some rain. But, you know, it, I yeah. mean, here in Chicago, it's cold. <laughs> or here in Austin, Texas, it's hot. It's too hot. So yeah. it, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, this next photo is, of you is here in Finland. And this is more recent because yeah. this is 2020. That was my last trip in a in an aeroplane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah, that was the Winter Cycling Congress in Yuan Su, in uh, 500 kilometers north of Helsinki. Yeah, and really nice. The first time I ever rode with studded tires. Ah, that was very interesting because yeah. in the snow you really notice the difference. Yes, uh, in the Netherlands yeah. we all cycle without studs, and it also works. But you do have more grip in the snow. But where it was funny was where the snow was cleared mm-hmm. because it rattles. Oh, <laughs> and yes, it was, yeah. I, I noticed that I started avoiding places where they had cleared the snow right. because it made so much noise. And it yeah. was you, you, I mean, you, you had the, you had the grip from the the, the studs. Yeah. So yeah, that's so cr- good why would stuff. I even go where it was cleared? And this was a really nice experience yeah, to me. Yeah. It was minus 15 degrees, so that is, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but... Um, Chilly. It yeah. was very, because, yeah, yeah, way below zero. Way and below we had zero. A, a cycle uh, tour, and we stood there yeah. s- 10 minutes in the cold and then listening to somebody <laughs> telling <laughs> stories, and it was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's... <sighs> And in I, I won't belabor this, but yeah, it's uh, the the fact of the matter is is that the Dutch cycle all the time, and it it, it really reinforces the the fact that uh, too so often those um, are excuses as to why they have a preconceived notion that oh, but yeah, we we can't do it here. And um, I had the opportunity to, to make it down to Seville, uh, down in Spain, to be able to, to take a look at their uh, facilities there. And, and I did a wonderful episode with, uh, with Manu uh, down there, Calvo, Manuel Cal- Calvo down there. And uh, just a, a wonderful success story of, you know, a city that got the initiative to... Way too hot for cycling. <laughs> yeah, way too hot for cycling. What are you talking about? They went from yeah, you know exactly. basically zero percent of people getting around town for, for everyday you know purposes uh, to, you know, they climbed to, you know, 10 percent, you know, cycle yeah, chair. Yeah, double digits. Know, yeah. Mode chair. Double yeah, digits in two, 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 three years, something like that. Yeah. Incredible. So one of the things that you did for me is you sent over your, your sort of your standard presentation. We don't have to go through the whole thing, but there were a no. few slides in here that I thought was just really extraordinary. And uh, and some were were just fantastic, uh, you know, little video snippets. There's no sound to this uh, that we have. No, because so, I do do yeah. the live uh, yeah, <laughs> narration. Yeah, you, you, you do the, 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 yeah. the live version of it. And, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, this is yeah. this so is the old data that we have in the here. The old data, yes. Yeah. But I thought it would be fun for, for us to just have a little bit of, you know, the concept. When you're giving a presentation, 
Um, obviously, we've seen you in Australia. We've seen you up in you know Finland doing stuff. You, you're you're going out and you're you're talking with folks. Um, yep. Talk a little bit about that message that you're you, and you. I guess you alluded to it earlier, but what are you trying to really bring across with this presentation? Well, I try to bring across all, all the things you said about it. Is uh, we can't do this because the Dutch yeah. have it in their blood, and I am trying to debunk that a bit. So yeah. I I showed them that we didn't we we weren't always a cycling nation. We were mm -hmm. sort of cycling nation always, but it we could have lost it just like any other nation did in the 1950s. Right. So if you look at Amsterdam 1922 they had more cycling than Amsterdam does have today. Right. So that yeah, so we we didn't gain the cycling, uh, we l didn't lose it as much. That right. is the, the the general idea. So the Netherlands didn't get the cycling culture, they they kept what they had more than other people. So in Amsterdam, if you look today, it's it looks similar, right. but there was a time that it was much worse than now. So uh, yeah. in, the, in the Dutch cities, cycling did decline more than what we see today. So we see an uprise and an increase in cycling from the 1970s, 90s, when they start to do it really intensely uh, to now. So yeah. They, yeah. And what I also say is when you look at these pictures left and right, you see, so, oh, nothing changed. But mm -hmm. in the middle, we had a different time in the middle. So that is yeah. the story again. So it looks like we didn't lose anything. But, oh, boy, there was a period in between right. the car era. And this is the this is the exact canal that you were mentioning earlier. Yeah, that I was talking yeah. about earlier. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. It was almost as, yeah, we looked a different direction, but it's yeah. still, yeah. So, yeah, so, I show them that we cycle now and that we didn't in the 1960s when I grew up. Right. I went to high, uh, high secondary school, as we call it, uh, when I was 11, 12. Mm -hmm. I was an early student, so most people's pupils are 12, but I was 11. Okay. Um, then uh, you have to cycle to your secondary school because it's too far to walk. And that is the time that Dutch children start cycling on their own. Yeah, 11, yeah. 12. And it was at the time when cycling was at its all time low. And most children ever in 1973 yeah. to 1978. Yeah. So this is the same street as we saw them before. Yeah. So that is really telling. It is. It's really telling. And the thing that you know yeah. just really drove home for me today um, is that your you grew up in that period yeah. of time. I mean, exactly. in 1965, same as me. So you know, it's. I talk from yeah. own, my own experience yeah. as a child. When the child deaths in 1973 were at its peak, right. I was a child that was in yes. that category. So yes. I, we lost a child in our class. We lost children who were in our neighborhood. We had parents crying at our kitchen table. The next door neighbor was crying at, at my mother with my mother at the kitchen table because she killed a child with her car. Yeah. So that's how close it came. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, and then, yeah it's, it, I mean, now do, do you, do you have any memories of some of the, uh, the demonstrations and some of the protests that took place? Not really, because okay. they were early early seventies, and I was ten years old in nineteen seventy five. Yeah, so that right. is not real. But I do remember yeah. following it in the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know I've seen buildings being demolished yeah. next to my school, for instance. Yeah. But that's not unique, and that's what I show here. Boston, yeah, because this is thing. Boston. You know, talk about yeah. buildings being demolished. Watch this, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a whole swath of, of a whole of, swath of the yeah. city being torn down for, torn, for this yeah. little thing for progress. This is, this mm. is what we did. Yeah. So yeah, in the 1970s, um, I, I like to, to to point out, and I know that you like to point this out too, is that it wasn't any one thing. There were a no. whole bunch no. of different things happening exactly. that so really had a bubbled up. At that. It was a perfect storm. Yeah. So perfect yeah. storm. Yeah, so we had people uh, protesting that all their houses were torn down. We had people protesting that important monuments were uh, uh, being torn down. And that was the elite who protested. And, and the houses was the, the the bottom of society. And they found each other there and became thus very powerful right. because they were a, a cross section of the society. Right. And we had people protesting that they couldn't cycle safely anymore. We had people protesting that their children were killed. So all that 
coincided, uh, happened at the same time. And, 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 and yeah, that was the perfect storm. Yeah. Yeah. And you were, uh, and yeah. you and I both were. were and just I was watching it as a teenager. Yeah. At this point, you were just, yeah, at this point you were 10 years old. and 10 and, years uh, old, but in 1980, yeah. I was 15, so yeah. Three years earlier, this is where, you know, the Kindermort really sort of yeah, bubbles up yeah, and, yeah, and all that. Yeah. So Yeah. And I made a new version of how the Dutch got their cycle paths to downplay a little yeah. bit this role because they yeah. weren't the only one. They weren't, So yeah. they get too much attention now yep. because not many Dutch people remember them yeah. particularly. They yeah. are now part of a much bigger organization for traffic safety. Right. Yeah. Who are yeah. a bit on the conservative side, even. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so and that is interesting. Yeah. 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 And yeah. this is more uh, from from. That. Yeah, more of that. Yeah. yeah don't that touch my children. So that's yeah. what I. Yeah. I remember this because I was a child that age. Right. We wore clothes like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Being attracted to this because I was a child that age, yeah. and they were protesting for me. Yeah, I, that it felt like that. So, and this is the Cyclists Union. Right, they were also founded in 1975. So everything happened sort of at the same time. Right, and they were protesting that the roads were getting so crowded with cars that they were getting unsafe. Yeah, and uh, we should do what we did outside the cities. That yeah. picture is from outside the city, where it was customary to have separate cycleways. Right from the 1930s on, right. but it was not customary in the cities. We didn't right. do it in the cities. And the cyclist union said, why don't we do it in the cities as well? Yeah. And actually Brilliant. that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant yeah. move. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, also, also so also in the seventies. Yeah. yeah. This was happening too. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So we had these car free Sundays and that, yeah, sort of showed people, Oh, there is another way maybe. Yeah. Or, and also the cities were so silent all of a sudden again. Yeah. So this so, is yeah, the slide where you talk about. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it really just wasn't the one thing. It wasn't, it's no, not like the, not. yeah, it, it's not like a, an entire society, uh, you know, suddenly, suddenly was just like, yeah, we should have safer streets no. again. It was a no. very, very complex time. There were lots of things happening at the same time. And so. Yeah. And um, we didn't waste yeah. a good crisis. So yeah. I'm hoping COVID-19 yeah. with all the cycling infrastructure that was built for it mm -hmm. might be the cataclysts for today. Yeah. You yeah. never yeah. know. Emerging out of another very, very uh, devastating you know, event, you know, a global pandemic. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. So uh, reversing the decision. So part of what yeah. was happening, because we did see that some houses were destroyed um, for exactly. the expansion of roadways to yeah. make room for, yeah. for cars. But... Uh, in, 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 at least in this case, this is Amsterdam. This is Amsterdam. Uh, where they, they, wanted they need to, to build, stitch it back. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to build a metro line. So that's mm -hmm. the, the, the swath that they tore down for the metro line. And then mm -hmm. after they built the metro line, they would build a road on top of it. Mm -hmm. But with, I believe, with only one vote difference in the council, mm -hmm. they uh, voted against that road. Mm -hmm. And now it is filled in again. And the only thing why you can see it. The buildings have flat roofs. That's the only thing that gives it away nowadays. Right. But you can't see that from the street. Yeah. So there, yeah, and there they all are. the gaps yeah. were filled in again. Yeah. So that's really good. And that's an important fact that you know just one one vote in you know yeah. it says on this slide you know people make differences and and I believe it, it was uh, it was a close vote in, in Groningen too when they had their vote yeah. uh, about yeah. that I think it was one vote it, is there there as well yeah there was yeah. also a bit of luck involved in the Netherlands yeah. and getting that momentum so when you have two three cities doing that the others then slowly follow yeah. and this is a personal tragedy of the minister of transport yeah. Who did yeah. really well there was a list about what he all uh, all the changes all the decisions that he, that he yeah. took by my seat belts and drunk driving and the maximum speed limit and he had lost his son yeah a yep. seven-year-old son in that street that doesn't look dangerous at all today, yeah. but it was a dangerous street. <laughs> yeah. He lost his child there. So it was personal interest maybe, yeah. but um, who cares? So, <laughs> so the reason why I wanted to shift to, to, to this set of slides is because this is like the genesis. This is 1978. This is sort yeah. of the genesis of what we now think of when we think of the Dutch cycle tracks and the cycle paths that are around. Um, yeah. In 1978, both in Tilburg and and The Hague, uh, this starts happening. Talk a little bit more about how influential this particular foray well, this actually, into this. 
Yeah, this was an experiment by the national government. So Tilburg mm-hmm. and The Hague volunteered. They didn't have to pay anything. And they got this cycle route, one cycle route through the city. And yeah. that was a test route. Yeah. The cyclist union was against this because they say it's too elaborate, too disruptive in the cities and too expensive. You can never have a network if you do it like this. Right. And uh, some, of the, some of it is gone now and yeah. some of it stayed. But uh, it got the... Well, it got, it got the flow starting here. Right. Um, so we learned a lot about that you don't have it to have it in streets like this yeah. and that you do have to have it on a bigger roads and that one road is one r- route in a big city is not enough. Yeah. So that is my message. So yeah. it worked better in Tilburg than in The Hague because yeah. it connected the university to the bars, I always say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, you need a network. And that's what happened in Delft. Yeah. After so simultaneously, two, you know, in, in 1979. No, well, yeah. two or five years later. Yeah, so yeah. they learned from Tilburg and The Hague and yeah. implemented that le- those learnings in the ha- in Delft, yeah. where they really said, okay, this is the network that we would want. So it's right. a perfect grid almost. And um, there were already some cycle paths everywhere, and there were a lot of things missing if you right. wanted this grid to be complete. So they tried and they built two thirds of this grid and with much smaller interventions, like a shortcut through a park, uh, yeah. better adjusted uh, cycle uh, traffic lights, I mean, or um, one-way cycling, but two-way cycling, allowing two-way cycling in a one-way street oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. without changing the street, which, yeah. which they did, did do in, in The Hague. So then it's much cheaper. And then using the money that they saved there for the one big uh, viaduct that may have been necessary. So here they that is a dotted uh, plan where they say, okay, there are the uh, problem points, the weakest, yeah. weakest links. And they did uh, remedy those in two thirds of the city. And that turned out to be the solution for the Netherlands, yeah. uh, making a small bridge, uh, allowing one, two-way cycling in one-way street with yeah. just a sign, uh, bus stop bypasses, those things. And here, the, the cyclist union was f- in favor of these k- type of measures. Yeah. And the funny thing is that they started with that, mm-hmm. and we ended up having what they built in Tilburg and The Hague. Yeah. So after 30 years, yeah. we do have the elaborate things yes. that happened in Tilburg and The Hague, which were then too far ahead of, its t- of their time. Right. But now, that is the standard. Yeah, so it's yeah. really funny. Yeah. What's but, great is yeah, I, smaller interventions are the way to start. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then you get the momentum and then you can do the bigger things. Yeah. And people see that it is necessary. I've uh, had the uh, the privilege and, and opportunity to spend a fair amount of time in Delft. And, and uh, a lot of this looks very familiar. Even some of the old footage <laughs> looks very familiar. Yeah. And it uh, just the fact that, yes, it's. It, the power of that grid is so incredibly important. An entire network, yeah. I mean, is is yeah. really yeah. thinking about it from yeah. a network perspective versus a facility, uh, you know, an individual facility perspective is so incredible. Yeah, important. if you just if you just have one route, you must be lucky to live on that route. I know yeah. people in Brisbane. There is one per- very nice route next to the river. Yeah. Uh, if you live next to the river and you work next to the river, you have a perfect. Uh, yeah. But you need uh, sheer luck almost. Yeah. And that's exactly course. what you drive home on this slide. Yeah, it is, is that yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, what's interesting to me too about um, all of this is, is really the, the, the dialogue that has come out over the last 10 years or so of, you know, what kind of, what are some of the things, what are some of the themes that make it special? And uh, inevitably, you know, a few things come up, you know, helmets already came up in our discussion. Mm -hmm. The other thing that comes up is what you're riding, the type of bike that you're riding. And there's something incredibly powerful about just the simplicity of a a comfortable, simple, upright bike uh, to be able to actually facilitate um, the handling of of the day-to-day you know, casual rider, um, because it's, I mean, it, it's, it, it is, it's, you don't have to dress special. You don't have to, you're, you don't, you're not hunched over. Um, it's not for speed, you know, really it's, it's for comfort. 
And I, I love that you had that slide in here, you know, take it from here. Yeah. What, what am I missing that, that, uh, that you normally say about this? Well, yeah, it is indeed what you said, uh, the fact that you can grab the bike and go as you are, you don't have to dress specially, you don't have yeah. to uh, make sure that there's no grease on your on your hands, <laughs> and yeah. things like that. We wouldn't accept that in a car. If a car was a race car, nobody would use them so much as they do now. Uh, <laughs> it, it has to be there, you have to be, be able to grab it and not think about it at all. Yeah. So that yeah. is what the Dutch bike does for you. It is sturdy. It will always be there. It, uh, you can use it in any type of weather. Um, like I said, we don't use studded tires in the winter because our tires work sun and uh, snow. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. The weight yeah. <laughs> keeps you down or something like that. I don't know. They're very heavy, but yeah. they're also very sturdy. Right. Uh, I had people ask me, "What you, you need to wear the helmet because if the fork breaks, the fork breaks? I've never heard of a fork breaking yeah. it's, a touch it's, bike. It's not made of it carbon would, fiber, folks. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So um, no. you mentioned grease earlier, uh, you know, just yeah. just then, and and I love the the fact that this particular photo has her on a bike where the chain is completely encased, because which is it, again, yeah, which is standard, and 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 it really emphasizes the point that um, the anticipation is that folks are going to be wearing normal clothing, including a dress and or pants, pant legs that, yeah. you know, might get soiled by a greasy chain. And so just yeah. the simplicity or, or the pragmatic approach of making sure that that oily, greasy chain is tucked away. And that's from the yeah. rider's perspective. It yeah. also is better for the bike itself because sure. they're out in the rain and in the uh, in all weather conditions and the fact that the chain is completely encased yeah. uh, makes that you don't have to grease it all the time. Yeah, good so stuff. So this is my own bicycle. Yay. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, and I you've got suspension. I, it's a, it's a fancy course, bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, and this is wrong home side bicycle parking yeah. because the weather conditions. Uh, even the Dutch dirty bikes don't like to be outside always. Always, so, yeah. um, Hey, what's, what's that really white lucky. stuff? That's snow, yeah. Really? We did oh have it. Gosh. We did have it in 2021 a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play that. I'm going to play that video. By the way, yeah, we're going to play that video. Uh, no, oh, about that 2021. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I fell twice. Because you yeah. fell. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 50 plus now. I should realize that I cannot do the things that when I was 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so this, yeah, the Dutch are lucky that they have their building regulations with mm -hmm. homeside bicycle parking. Right. You have to have bicycle parking in a Dutch home. Right. Uh, and so that's exactly what, what, what's happening here is yeah. we saw the, the has, bikes out front and now we're seeing yeah. more and more incorporation of the, yeah. the housing. For about there. 20 years, they took it out of the regulations because okay. the market would regulate it itself. Yeah. It didn't. Yeah. So <laughs> home builders started to uh, cut budgets and yeah. uh, leave the bike parking out. And then the, the cities had the problem because those bikes were all in the streets. So they were... The regulations were adapted again and they were brought back. So now you have to have yeah. good bicycle parking in your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, that, it's, that's a fascinating thing because this is architecture. And mm -hmm. um, I'm going to pull up the, uh, the photos that you sent over of the architectural designs, the drawings. <laughs> um, I think I know which this. picture you mean. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you, you sent over these, these images that are, are fantastic because yeah. these are architectural designs. So walk us through. Yeah. What are we looking at here, Mark? We are looking at a one-family home, three stories. And the, uh, the most left-hand side is the, is the ground floor which we call the ground floor, you call it the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, and you see indoor bicycle parking. So the, the front has two doors. One is the front door and the other is the door to the bicycle parking, which is incorporated in the plan. So they have the kitchen on the ground floor and the dining area. And then on the first floor is the living room and an outside terrace. And then the third floor, or what we would call the second floor, <laughs> yeah. is the bedroom. Uh, two bedrooms, really, I see, and the bathroom. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. that's how a d typical Dutch home would be built in a new yeah. residential area. 
Well, so, yeah. so I'm, I'm very grateful that you sent this over because then I went ahead and, and did the design of, of what the typical American house looks like. And <laughs> just kidding. No, you sent this over too, but yeah. yeah. I believe it's two homes or I, think, I don't, <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is mind boggling to me to, that you give so much space to a car. What this we see here is living a plan space, people, of a, space yeah. for people and yeah. space for two cars or for two bikes. And two then bikes, here you yeah. go. Four cars in yeah. a space. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the car space is bigger than the living room. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's incredible to a Dutch eye. This is, yeah. Yeah. Madness. Yes. <laughs> madness. Because it, yeah. there's not much space left over for humans for on this living. footprint. Yeah. <laughs> and that is what, what happens in cities too. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because we don't have it. We look at it from the outside and we think, this is strange. But yeah. when you're in the middle of it, a lot of people don't even realize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the something. same for the Dutch. They don't realize that their cycling infrastructure is so special. But because yeah. I lived in Berlin for a while and I came back and I thought, hang on, this is not so normal after all. <laughs> so, so yeah, so Berlin really was a formative uh, period of time. So that was 1992. Oh, yes. 1992, and, yes. Yeah, and, and so then you came back and, and, and it wasn't that much longer. I mean, literally within seven years, you started, you know, publishing videos and blogging about it and really launching this stuff out there. Uh, so yeah, it was yeah. interesting to see how, how that sort of took hold and yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. Caught a tiger Funny by the tail, as we say, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the Funny thing is at the time I did cycle in Berlin a lot. So, mm -hmm. it, and they did have cycle, cycling infrastructure a little bit, sure, but they sure. never changed it. They never updated it. So yeah. now it's totally out, out of date and old fashioned and, um, what they call a uh, sidewalk cycling infrastructure. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not good anymore. It's not. But at the time in 1992, we didn't have, we didn't have that experience, uh, that 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 upgrade that we have had since yeah. in the Netherlands either. So the difference was less big in that time yeah. than it is today. Yeah. So, so quite, quite one happy of the, to cycle in, in yeah, Berlin, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. So really, the, this story is you know of bicycle dutch and and your your journey through all of this from 1965 through to to the present is is one of in in sync with the the great evolution of what we have seen and what for for those of us from the outside looking in we look towards yeah. you know what what the dutch have and go gosh we could never have that but wouldn't it be nice if but it really exactly. is a lesson. It really is a story of, yeah. of the fact that they lost it. They right. went towards automobilization, you know, starting post World War II, uh, in and 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 started moving forward. You know, really doubling down on auto centric designs and, you know, potentially even destroying you know historic areas of the city. Um, Rotterdam, notwithstanding, that's a completely different story there because the city was destroyed. Somebody during else World destroyed it, so, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and, and really, some yeah. urban designers in other Dutch cities were envious of Rotterdam because right. they had that blank canvas. Yeah, blank which canvas. It's incredible when you yeah. think about it today. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about um, uh, Rotterdam in, in, in a little bit because there's a, an image that comes up in this video that we're going to play. So yeah, what I'm going to do at this point, let's, let's cue up this video. This will give my voice a, a break and your voice a break and we'll turn the okay. audio up and actually see this. It's only five minutes long, but before I hit play, why don't you give a little introduction? What is this video all about? Okay. This is the video about all my posts of 2021. So I try to group the, 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 uh, the videos that I make in a com <laughs> in a co yeah, cohesive uh, story. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, it's, it's, and it's absolutely beautiful. So folks, uh, enjoy. It's only okay. five minutes long, and we'll uh, if if you do see something where you want me to pause, just let me know, and I'll hit pause, and we'll we'll chat a bit. Uh, but otherwise, I'll we'll, I'll let it just play. Welcome to the overview of 2021, the year in which I looked again into how the Dutch got their bicycle parts how the sustainable safety policies influenced the cycling infrastructure, 
and how Utrecht tries to get less people on this particular cycle route. 2021 was a year with a lot of snow, but the Dutch kept on riding, also during the night. Sometimes a bit too confident. Fortunately, the snow was cleared from the cycleways Thanks for soon enough. One in there. <laughs> I visited the redesigned I stations of Driebergen Zeist and Kuvorden. Actually filmed a year before, but oh well. <laughs> the station in Zwolle got a brand new underground bicycle parking garage. You notice I pronounced the names of the and cities in the And some of the Dutch Ovefits way? shared yes. bicycles That's really hard now to have locks without keys. <laughs> when you speak English. <laughs> Utrecht opened a giant underground bicycle parking in the center. And the longest rainbow cycleway at the university campus. Cycling can emancipate people. Rotterdam's mass tunnel was reopened after a three-year renovation. And the longest wooden cycling bridge was opened near Winschoten. Yeah, they call it the longest cycle bridge, but I know some that are longer. <laughs> but here it's an experience. This oh yeah, cycling that's... viaduct connects Sertogenbos and Vught better. And this giant cycling bridge connects two tiny towns. A lot of criticism that they weren't tiny, the towns, but oh well. They were created to get cycling out of the way. Some and some are thing. simply outdated. Outdated. Yeah, some infrastructure was repurposed. This used to be a provincial road. See the change? I love to document change. This used to be a railway financed from the coffee trade in Indonesia. And this used to be a military airbase runway. I documented a lot of change this year. Reconstructed intersections and a reconstructed main cycle route. Home with Utrecht changed dramatically. The city even removed cycle tracks. Yeah. Yeah, you can stop here. Th this is um, increasingly harder to explain to a foreign audience that we've now um, we've now passed the era of the cycleway almost. Um, the cycleways were really good to boost the levels, so we now have so m many people cycling that those cycle paths are no longer good enough at some locations, at very specific locations. So. Um, yeah, that is uh, making my life a bit harder now to explain that. But uh, yeah, so this street used to have separate cycling infrastructure. Right. And now the whole street is a, like a cycleway and cars right. are allowed to use it as well. Yeah. But you couldn't just skip that step. Yeah. People no, would like I think to that's skip. A, that's a very, very good point because really what yeah. it's saying is that uh, this is now technically a shared space where motor vehicles exactly. are allowed yeah. uh, to, to be there, to, to yeah. use the paraphrase of, of the, the word that you, you all use is the auto as guest. guest. Um, yeah. But the volume is extremely low. They're not, oh, yeah. not large volumes yeah. of motor vehicles. So, yeah. Absolutely not. So they say you have to have at least double the amount of cycling as that there are cars. Yeah. But in this case, it's five to one. So five, five cyclists one. Yeah. to yeah. one to yeah. one car. Yeah. So then the car really is forced to be behave like a guest. Yeah. You couldn't just say from one day to another where there are many cars and yeah. just a few people cycling. From today, this is a cycle street that doesn't work. Yeah. because it doesn't work yeah, at all. <laughs> circumstances aren't yeah. correct. Yeah. It's for motor traffic. That is also what happened in front of City Hall in Rotterdam. Okay, I'm going to pause on this one just because I, okay. I wanted to bring this up about Rotterdam, and okay. and 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 that is uh, we, we already mentioned the fact that um, they were devastated during World War II. The, the Germans sure. bombed the city, and yeah. uh, so they had this blank slate. Much of what we now see in terms of the uh, wonderful infrastructure that has. Uh, emerge or is emerging from a bike and pedestrian uh, facility or from a bike and pedestrian perspective is relatively recent. But explain to me why they decided to go their own route and make yellow cycle tracks instead of ah. the, the classic Dutch red. They just wanted to be no, different? 
<laughs> I think so. This is the street in front of the town hall. Yeah. So this is this is a prime location, yeah. and they wanted to, to be special. I guess that's the whole thing. <laughs> and you can see the, the people who are watching can see that the sidewalk where the trees and the the, the poles for the uh, overhead wires of the tram are also um, is very elab- uh, expensive natural stone, which also is a little bit yellowish. Mm-hmm. And I believe they didn't think the red would go good with go well with that stone. I yeah. guess that's it. I guess oh, that's, that's it. And yeah, and you you see that more often now. Uh, I think um, um, Eindhoven has done it too. And and uh, okay. and. and, and uh, in Amsterdam, you have brick even on the cycleways sure, in the sure. city well, it's center. Clo- it's close enough to it's the, close, the red. Yeah, yeah, that is at yeah. least the, the same color. But yeah. we we don't really like uh, the cycleway to be brick and then f- yeah. the one car lane to be black asphalt. Yeah. That is a bit odd. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I, I had to ask you, you about you that. You only yeah. see that in yeah. the city centers at prime locations. Right. So yes. it is from an aesthetic point of view it that they do aesthetic. that. Okay. But um, in this case, the difference between the cycleway and the footway, uh, the, cy- the sidewalk, mm-hmm. is big enough, the difference. So people understand it. At least yeah. Dutch people understand it instantly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny when you are at locations where there are a lot of foreigners, yeah. not only in Amsterdam, but also in border cities like the small city of Venlo near the German border, when there's a German national holiday, they all come shopping in the Dutch city, and then you see them all walking in the sidewalk, yeah. uh, on the, si- uh, the, the cycleway. So, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And they park where that, where that is not allowed, because that is normal in Germany, but right. not in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Treating yeah, it more like people space. understand. <laughs> yeah. And in the center of Eindhoven. Oh, it is right there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. From where you can cycle to Seto Hombos on the future F2. I did a lot of rides this year, so I had to incorporate them in the story. The F261. It's nice that our interurban cycle routes now have numbers, which was an upgrade of an already good cycle. Oh, this is also interesting. Maybe you can stop here. Yeah. Because we we never start from scratch in the Netherlands. There's never a, a zero situation in the before situation. Right. Um, a lot of people in the comments also always say, could we have the before? Could you ship that over to us? Right. Um, yeah, because yeah. we, we are increasing now things that would be perfect in other countries, but are not perfect in this in this right. country, yeah. in our situation. So yeah. I'm getting a bit, um, yeah, yeah. It's, we complain about the left hand side where other people would die to have that. Correct. So they yeah. think we're spoiled little brats here. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good thing that y'all are, are so incredibly humble. So, you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to even get you to brag about stuff. So I, I'm, oh, you know, it's yeah. good. We this is brag good. in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 44 has its good parts, but yeah. a lot of it is quite narrow. Even narrow That's me than criticizing. Here, where it yes. is just oh. called an ordinary bicycle path. Some of these interurban routes are over 40 years old, mm-hmm. but clearly very well maintained. Cycling in the countryside becomes easy when gaps in the cycling network are bridged. Literally. And you get such attractive cycle routes separately or next to roads of different sizes. Sometimes the route is shared with cars. But often you cycle away from motor traffic. That's the better solution usually. Or around them. No wonder the Dutch cycle in all weather conditions. Also in the rain. Bring that snow back. Or in the snow. <laughs> Oh, well, this is slush. In real snow. snow. Real but we do have real snow. <laughs> Cycling is as Dutch as tulips. There we go. I had to bring in tulips. Yeah. And windmills. And windmills. <laughs> of course. But it's great that we now have windmills, tulips, and cycling. Yes. Yeah. 
this is fantastic. That's... Yeah. Thank you for in, indulging me and, and giving, you know, that opportunity to, to, to share that and, and, and to the audience. I hope you really enjoyed that. Uh, for, for the audience that is just tuning in and listening to this, I'll, obviously the links to that video will, will be uh, in the show notes. So head on over to the show notes or the landing page for this episode and, and, and look at that. When you put that together, especially for this year, I mean, it's been one of those weird couple of years where, you know, 2020 was very, very devastating in terms of the pandemic and the lockdown. 2021, we had a little bit more freedom, but still not traveling as much. We're in Um, lockdown again, so no no freedom here. (laughs) Yeah, and and for you guys, you're you're in extreme lockdown once again. Talk a little bit about... Yeah, talk a little bit about that journey of going back and looking at 2021 and documenting that, uh, because you did point out that you did a lot of rides, a lot of longer rides. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I did a lot of because that was easy to do. Um, that also has a personal reason. I'm not all too well health wise. Um, I'm actually waiting for open heart surgery, so I really needed to. Um, to, to find a way to not be doing the blog every time, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I needed some time out and a ride is much easier to edit. Um, yeah. So I just turn on the uh, camera, film a ride, and that is just one shot and that's yeah. it. Um, so that's easier for me. So I, I did it alternating every other week. I did a ride yeah. just to have a little less to do. And yeah. uh, in 2021, I will cut back even more. Okay. Uh, from uh, blogging every week, I will do it only twice a month. Okay. So the right. first, the first and the third Wednesday of the month, I will put out a new blog and new video. Right. So because I really need to, uh, yeah, yeah, to look after myself better. Look at look while at I your... wait for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. While look I wait at... for that surgery, yeah, which yeah. is postponed because of Corona, the COVID oh, uh, right. yeah, yeah. pandemic, yeah. there is no hospital bed for me because yeah. all the people who are not vaccinated are yeah. in my bed, yeah. literally. Yeah, yeah. So yes, that is a problem. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have been uh, treated already. Well, and, we're uh, we're incredibly lucky that uh, that you uh, are continuing to get out on the bike and get some exercise in, which is good for your exactly. health. And that is uh, my reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and being able to uh, share some of those rides with us, and you know, all we have to do is look at the data, though. Too, it's it's like the reach of video. Because you have, you know, generated, you you have such a wide audience, and the YouTube audience is there. Um, it reaches, you know, I hate to say it, it actually reaches more people than the blog, um, yeah. in many ways, and is is less, as you mentioned, taxing on you. So that's that's an yeah. important part. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking about my own future. <laughs> yeah. Will I yeah. do the blog even more because yeah. the blog takes most time. Yeah. And is. Yeah. Uh, as you, yeah, people, the blogs are not, not in, on Vogue anymore so much as not they so used much. to be. Not so much. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, the yeah. power so of people video. people have moved on. Yeah, the yeah. power of video is, is really, you know, quite extraordinary. I, I pulled yeah. up your but website. It, did, so that, it does give me an opportunity to go into matters a bit deeper correct. than just video. Yes. Yeah. So I do that for other people. So there's yeah. a different kind of audience on my blog yes. than on YouTube. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is your website. So I'll make sure that the, the hyperlinks uh, for the audience uh, are, is included in the video description below, as well as out on the uh, show notes and, and also, you know, also included on the website uh, for this episode. I'll make sure that that's in there. Now, you do take the time to um, uh, frequently uh, get out on social media to, to you know, kind of share stuff and, and, and interact a bit. Um, what's your preferred social media platform that you like to be on other than uh, out on you, YouTube, obviously? Oh, that's obviously Twitter. Okay. Yeah, Twitter is easy. I, sometimes I put out a snippet on Twitter and that doesn't t- take any efforts at all. Yeah. <laughs> and that gets more views than a video that took me weeks to, to produce, right. which yeah. is sometimes a bit like, oh. <laughs> but you're um, like, oh, well, wait that's a how it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's and, how it and, is, and, so. and here you go, folks. Uh, so it, it is at Bicycle Dutch is Mark's uh, yeah. handle there on Twitter. And as you can yeah. see, you know, you've, you've got a tremendous following of folks, you know, some 
27.3 thousand, you know, folks out there. So, uh, yeah, it's great. On Twitter. Yeah. Is there it's anything incredible that... how easy it is to reach people <sighs> yeah, yeah. via Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you absolutely. get the, the weirdest contacts with, with people on, on, in, 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 in jobs that you would normally never sure. get contact with like ministers and <laughs> yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, as a content creator myself and, and somebody who is, is, you know, constantly, you know, trying to engage people and, and tell positive stories of what's happening mm -hmm. in cities yeah. around the world. Um, it, it's, you see both sides of, of social media. You see the, the negative side of it, but you also see the positive side of it on the positive side of it. Um, you know, Twitter is how I met Brandon Lust, you know, American yeah. theater and, 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 and you and Brandon are, 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 are good friends. And, yeah. uh, it's, you know, it, it's, you know, there's a lot of valued friendships that come out of, oh, yeah. of social media yeah. as well, because yeah. it really does help flatten the world and in, in that sense and bring people closer together. Yeah, it's together. incredible how so. easily you are in, in contact with each other. Yeah. And it feels so natural yeah. uh, once you're yeah. used to it. Yes, once um, you're used to it, yeah. Especially um, during COVID times, when I mean, you couldn't go to real places. Yeah. It's nice to have that uh, interactive uh, place where you can contact people in a different way. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's good really stuff. Nice. Yeah. Is there certainly. anything that we haven't talked about that you want to leave uh, the the viewers and the listeners uh, with here today? Even more. Well, you talked just now about the positive. I, I really try to emphasize the positives of cycling, um, and I really try to keep my message positive. So that is, yeah, that is what resonated with me instantly. So yeah, that is my goal to make yeah. cycling to present cycling as a positive alternative to other means of transportation which are not so good for your health and not so good for the world and which take up far too much public space that yes. we just don't have so yeah. yeah good stuff good stuff mark thank you so much for joining me on the active Towns podcast welcome. thank you for having me like i said it okay. was a pleasure you told me it would be fun, and you were right. <laughs> <laughs> I like to deliver on that, for sure. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you found this conversation with Mark educational, entertaining, and inspiring. And if you did, please give it a like, leave a comment, and consider passing it along to a friend or two. Also, please be sure to check out Mark's Bicycle Dutch channel and the content we discussed. I've included those links in the video description below and in the show notes. Well, folks, that's all for this week's episode. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.